Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at adding a button and getting it to go somewhere. We'll also add this kind of hover color here, plus a few things related to a button. If you came here just for the rollover color, have it selected and it's in here. This little drop down, go to hover and style that. Okay, that, pick a background, different background color and you'll be adding the hover. <laughs> I know the title of this video uh, promises rollover color, and, but I ended up doing it about five minutes in. So there you go, that's the cheat code. Uh, for the rest of us who wanna learn all about buttons, let's carry on. All right, adding a button, easy. Go to add, and down here, there's one called button under basic, okay? And click, hold, and drag it. And it's gonna kinda not go underneath, it's gonna wanna go to the side of our image. Okay, it'll go underneath this text, uh, you know, paragraph text, but let's see why. I'm gonna go after this button. Okay, you'll see in my navigator panel here, remember if you haven't got it stuck, go to navigator, stick it to the edge, super handy. You can see he's in the section box and he is what's called a sibling, okay, because he's in with his other siblings. He's all amongst these guys, are all kind of in this section. He's the parent, these are children and also siblings to these guys. Anyway, some language there for you. But he's not underneath. Why is he not underneath? Okay, it's because this image is doing something a little weird. So this heading tag here, we've got a paragraph text. Okay, can you see when I hover above it, can you see it stretches on for infinity? Okay, it's called a block level element. And what happens is, unless you tell it to be a width, it goes, I'm going all, as far as I can, to the edge. Same with the paragraph text. It goes, I'm going all the way over here and I'm filling it. Nobody else can be up here. That's the default for it, okay? An image, can you see here? He's not racing off to the edges. He's saying, I'm here. He's what's called inline. So block level, inline. Okay, we just need to change him. So here, this fella is this option here. So we're gonna cover layout in more detail as we go along, but let's do this one now. So with it selected, I'm in my styles. I'm gonna, this first option here says layout. He, his display setting is set to something called inline. Okay, inline just means he's in line. This guy's in line as well. Can you see? He's in line. Let's look at the difference between this one. <gasps> look at that. His display and he is set to block. Okay, and he will fill up. You can even see. Thank you, Webflow. It says he will fill up all the available width. Whereas this fella, okay, he won't. Okay, he got stacked next to each other. So buttons are really good when they're in line because if I want lots of buttons, kind of like in this nav in the top that we don't have yet, that's really good. And his image, sometimes you want images stacking next to each other. But in this case, we don't. We want to say you, my friend, is actually, go to this one here. Look at that. He says, nobody can be next to me. Not friendly at all. <laughs> the button, though, gets pushed down and squeezed down. All right. Uh, so our button's on his own little bit. Let's go and do some changing. So this one's going to be called event details. Okay. Uh, let's look at some styling. So you can select it all in here. I can do bolds and stuff in this. And um, what I want to do is with it selected, I'm going to show you advanced typography. So under typography, okay, there's one in here that says, we're going to that type, more type options. You ready? There's one in here that says make caps. Not sure why I took you there. Anyway, we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just type in capitals, save yourself some time. All right, let's style it. Okay, now uh, what will happen if I go and do, well actually I've already styled it. I did, didn't I? I made it all caps. Ooh, what happened? You saw it. A style was created called button. I didn't make it. It wasn't there when I first dragged it out. Watch this, if I drag out a button now by itself, okay, you see there, he has no class applied. Okay, but when I went and added that style, pretending to do it on purpose, <laughs> <laughs> but forgetting to name it because we all do, it created this thing called button. And that could be confusing when you're new and you're like, ah, oh, is that something already made? Like, is that special? Nope, you made that <laughs> by accident. So let's call this one button and we're gonna call this one hero. Okay, just because it's in the hero box, I'm gonna do some styling that I'm not gonna use anywhere else on the website, just in this hero box. So that's why I call it button hero. You might end up a button nav or button footer, button contact page. Okay, so we've got that, hit enter. And I'm gonna do some styling. I'm gonna pick a color. So under backgrounds for this button, I'm gonna pick just a kind of a green from my design. You can pick any colors you like. Okay, and what else do I wanna do? I'm gonna pick some typography. Arial's fine. We're gonna use the new Arial. Open Sans is a really pretty, pretty, pretty is the wrong word for it. It is a very sensible um, body copy font. Really legible, free to use, and I like it. But I'm gonna to go to bold. Size-wise, yeah. 14 pixels looks fine for me. The only th other thing I want to do is I want to add rounded corners. So now this panel here, I want to give you a little tip on using the styles panel. It is big and confusing. Not big and confusing, it's just lots. You're like, where is everything? 
when you scroll down you eventually find it what i like to do you might not like is you can see these little arrows here you can actually just click these to make them smaller and just open the one you want look at that huh oh, you're like okay so i want to do what the borders excellent just open that up work on it close it back up i don't know feels a bit more mm, free to me uh, another cool trick is with them you can hold down the option key on a mac alt key on a pc so hold that down and then click any one of them and they they all open okay and they hold down that same key they all close and see these little blue dots that shows you that somewhere in here you've made a change you've made no changes to border so there's nothing going on so button hero uh nothing you've changed none of these you've done some topography you remember what it was that's right we've made it all caps and we've done some background okay so if i do borders now and i say actually i want the border radius to be something i'm dragging it here i'm watching it over here okay picking something there you go and um, now i toil it down can you see oh there's a blue dot blue dot means i've changed something We'll do amber later on. It means that mm, something else is applying to it. It's not something you've directly done to it, which is important, but we'll get to that. I know you'll ask. Uh, so yeah, we've got rounded corners. Let's look at padding and margin again. Oh, actually, no, let's make it work. <laughs> we've done rounded corners, but we haven't made it link anywhere. So a button has some default things. Now, like before, settings from this cog here, or with it selected, we can go to the cog over here. It doesn't matter. Lots of options, just a few options. Let's use just a few. So by default here, we're going to use, we we'll use this first one. So when this button is clicked, it's going to go to URL. You can pick any URL you like. Okay. And um, it's going to open in our case in another tab. Okay. That just means that when it button's clicked, it's going to leave this website open, open up a new tab up the top here in the browser and go to that. So both of them are open. If it's an internal link, okay, to another page on your site, okay, or you just want it to replace it, you can turn that off. So it will switch out the website wherever that's going. Okay, let's do that and give it a test. Open a new tab, um, close it down. I'm gonna go to my preview. We haven't done much previewing, have we? Because it's pretty it's pretty good at showing you exactly what it's gonna look like in a browser without you previewing. To preview, it closes down all your panels and gets rid of all this kind of like weird blue lines. Watch this. Weird blue lines gone. And watch this, I can click it. And magic, I've got myself to an amazing website. Okay, uh, so. Let's go back into here, turn the eyeball off. Other things that I wanna show you to do with the button is actually, let's go through these other ones. So you going to a URL, this would be going to like an external website, like, hey, go check out this um, great Webflow tutorial that you should go check out by this <laughs> handsome but hairy dude. Uh, so you could link to that. And um, another one is you can link to a link on this page. You know, we've only got one page. So if you go, I wanna link to a page on this website, ah, oh, I can only go to home because we've only got one page. You can do uh, linking to a section. Ooh, so we're gonna do that in a bit. Uh, you know, our one pages, we're gonna add navigation to jump around the different sections. It doesn't quite work yet, but we'll do it. You can, when this button is clicked, go to somebody's email, okay? Or when it's clicked on a mobile device, start ringing. So you can have like a call this number. That only works, well, no, it works in my browser. If I put in a phone number here and click on it, it will try and launch Google Voice or something. Anyway, but on a mobile phone, it'll click and it'll kind of preload the phone. So those are those options. For the moment, though, we're just going to use our any old URL just because it's a placeholder until later on we get to jumping to our sections on our site. So those are the different links. And the other thing we might want to do is change the hover because at the moment, you know, uh, you want to change the uh, hover color. So let's look at that. So with it selected, I'm gonna take you in to some secret place. So we're gonna to go to our styles. So at the moment we're looking at button hero. I wanna style the hover. So when you, you know got your mouse over it, it works. It's hidden in here. With the button selected, Webflow knows that, hey, there's some special things with buttons. Where should we put them? They put them in here at the moment. Have a look around, somewhere in here. Okay, it says, hey, buttons have special things. Here they are. There's the hover, pressed, focused, visited. You use hover. Okay, and you can see it's added a special class. Green means Figma, oh sorry, Figma. <laughs> Webflow already knows what you're talking about. It's kind of like a pre-written one. There's already a class called Hover. You didn't have to name it. It goes, hey, these are special things that buttons have. We've made them. You can just pick them from the cool drop down. Okay, and with it now on, you can say, I want the style for the background to change to something else. Pick another color, okay. Close it down and there we go. Let's give it a preview. 
Okay, if you click off, it'll kind of preview without going to full preview mode. Some of them do. Look at that, we've got a hover. Look at us, CSS superstars. And um, so yeah, we've got a hover. Anything else I wanna show you? Okay, there are, if I have it selected, okay, if I wanna go back to hover, because I wanna style it, I've gotta go back into here, because it go it defaults once I've clicked off. I, you know, clicked off, click back on. You can see it's gone to button hero, but where did that go? If you wanna go and change that color again, go to hover, and there it is, it's all kind of loaded back up and you can go and change that one. You might decide to do one of the other ones. The other ones don't, they don't, they don't not work. But things like pressed, okay, is when somebody clicks it, what happens, but nobody sees the click. This is my opinion anyway. Let's make it bright and red, bright and yellow. <laughs> Come on then. Okay, bright and yellow. So let's have a look. Um, you have to go to preview mode to check pressed. Watch this, when you click this, you're gonna fly off to another page. But did you see it? You can, it's really quick, but you can see it went yellow. So you can do pressed if you like. Mm, yeah, nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> Focused is something else, Google that. It's kind of to do with tabbing around a website and accessibility, and but uh, kind of out of the scope for this one. Let's have a look what else we've got in there. Focus, visited. If you've gone to that link before, people don't really use that one anymore. Uh, it'll change color if somebody's clicked it once. Remember those old blue links that go purple that you, because you've been there before, not really used for a button, in my opinion. All right, um, cool. And secretly you made your first combo class, which we'll talk about in a bit, but yeah. That is a button, that is styling it. Oh, the other thing is, I'll just check my notes there. Hover, <laughs> is hover gonna work on a phone? It is not, you can't hover on your phone, okay? You can't hover your finger over your um, cell phone's screen and it changed color, so this is a desktop only thing, so yeah. Oh, the other thing we need to do is padding and margin while we're here. So I've got my button selected, I can see that style here. I'm gonna go to my spacing, okay? And do I want padding or margin? You have a think now before I say anything. Is it, bad? Is it padding or margin? If you chose padding, you were wrong. Look, click hold. So I could put padding in there and it moves it down, but obviously padding is on the inside of the box and margin, click, drag it up. Ooh, like that. There you go. All right, it was a bumper. We learned buttons, hovers, we showed you the different ways of doing it. I showed you how to close these down. Remember Option or Alt to open them all out. Click one of them. We visited the Comic Sans Appreciation Club and we found the secret ingredients for these buttons here. This is not just buttons, we found stuff in here. You can, other elements within this course and within our Webflow will have this drop down to show you things that are you know, related to that particular um, element. All right, cool. So um, one thing is that if you are following along, I'm gonna set a class project for you to submit in a little bit. And basically it's gonna be kind of making sure you're up to where I am. So if you are following and just watching, um, I don't know, it's really good to practice, but also um, when we do the class project, you'll be kind of mostly done and ready to submit. Um, so yeah, do the exercises while we're going along. It's good, it's the good way to learn. And it'll make the class project just a small little thing to add. Anyway, all right, on to the next video. That, my friend, is the end of the video. Uh, but not the end of the course, uh, the video you just watched. Um, it is a small part of my larger course called Webflow Essentials. So if you enjoyed the video, my teaching style, there'll be a card up here you can click or a link in the description, okay? And come join me for the full course. Uh, like the video as well if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff, but hopefully see you in the course. Bye.